Professor Gamzu, great to be with you at an Aliyah-inspired event uh, on behalf of Nefesh Benefesh. Thank you so much. We're, we're trying, I guess, to <clears throat> encourage uh, people around the world to look to Israel as their home. And I thought to start with you, you are the son of uh, immigrants, Olim, to, uh, to, Iran. from Iran, right? Who moved to Israel. Yeah. Uh, you built up, they built up life, you built yeah. up a, a, a pretty incredible uh, yeah, exciting. career. So what, what was that like growing up in a home of, uh, of Olim? You know, I never really realized that uh, I'm different. Like uh, my mother and father are not Sabah. They are not born in Israel. And this was like the, the, the common thing in Israel that days. I was you know, born in the 60s, uh, then the 70s. This was very, very common. But then again, when I grew up more than that, you know, in uh, uh, reaching high school, then I understood that I am being uh, in, in, a, in a culture or in a family that uh, introduces more than being an Israeli, being one with the culture of Iran, with the culture of people that are making a new life. Uh, and many, you know, friends and the community that has other cultural uh, habits and uh, anything that makes you uh, different. different. And, uh, you know, you are brought up as an Israeli, but then you are understanding, you, you really understand the, the, the strength and the powerful of, of uh, cultural uh, diversity. And you feel proud. Uh, because you really see the mixture of having uh, Iranian culture, being proud of that, mixing that with being an Israeli, really born as an Israeli, and then this mixture creates here in Israel the most wonderful way of living, in my view. It's a melting pot, really. Yeah, it's Israel, a, it, it's a melting and. It leverages what we are, and we are achieving more because we are mixing the, the DNA of an Israeli and the DNA of bringing cultures from other uh, you know, communities all around the world. This mixture is really powerful in Israel. Did you grow up at home speaking Farsi, a Persian? My mother and father spoke a lot. Uh -huh. I was saying, I'm an Israeli, I will speak Hebrew and English, and this is my... But I, when people will uh, are speaking around me Persian, I really understand what they are talking about, and I can, you know, continue the conversation. Interesting. So tell me, did, did coming from that background, do you feel like it, 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 I don't know if it inspired, but it was what maybe fueled motivated me. and fueled, yeah, fueled your, your trajectory in life, going to the army, going into the medical corps yeah, uh, trying in the field. to do what my parents did not do mm -hmm. they were not doing they didn't achieve even high school education not talking about university and then when i knew that the, here and there i have the capability to continue uh, the, uh, the the art of my father which is who was uh, a jewel maker i understood that i want to take the path of, of studying more, of achieving, uh, you know, higher education. And I was looking for, for aims and, and, uh, and achievements that are beyond the common, the regular. Well, I think that's pretty obvious. And you haven't, you don't stop, right? Yeah, yeah, I really, <laughs> yeah. this is part of my DNA. As, uh, as, as a student, as, as, as a young person. Like some people might say you become director general of the health ministry, it's time to take a pause. Then you become the head of Ichilov, time to take a pause. You become the coronavirus commissioner, yeah. it's, it's, it's not enough. Uh, this is my, my, my drive, and I'm looking uh, ahead and trying in my uh, position to, to, you know, to give services and to affect the health of any Israeli. And this is what I'm doing. Uh, and yeah, you do not have a limit. And you are trying to, to catch the, the next limit and to achieve that. Not for your sake, not to, to, to my ego. But I really know better than many others how to run 
healthcare organization, healthcare system, and how to achieve, uh, you know, better healthcare, care, uh, healthcare for, for all Israelis. You know what? Uh, not only in the national way of Israel, but internationally. And this is what I'm putting my aims at, and uh, still we have many, many achievements. Well, we hear, we hear the banging going on around us, right? Yeah. Drilling and banging, it seems yeah, that there's uh, stuff. Another emergency room, uh -huh. you know, expanding the emergency room, the services here in Ichilov. And this is really a thing that keeps me tick going on ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to, you know, anyone that, uh, that receives healthcare services here in Ichilov, and I'm trying to do that better and better for their sake. And they are giving me challenges all day. And the next challenge is my challenge. Uh, uh, we are creating now uh, a tower that, that will give uh, the best uh, oncology services here in in Ichilov, the best rehabilitation services, right. another tower, uh, and, and emergency room, many, many. So the activity never ends. I, I want to ask you, you know, a lot of Olim, especially those who come from North America, Nefesh Benefesh works mm -hmm. particularly also with people in the medical field, right, to try to uh, attract doctors or medical professionals to move to Israel. I'm sure that you've encountered a lot of yeah, these yeah, people yeah. throughout all of the different hats that you've worn. Can you talk a bit about the contribution that they've made, where you find them, how, how that's impacted? They're coming, uh, you know, from the best places in the States. Uh, they, uh, uh, they are really professionals. Uh, you can talk about nurses or physicians or other healthcare workers. And, uh, w and this is really doing a change in the healthcare system in Israel. So we are really uh, embracing them. Uh, we are uh, uh, achieving a lot of excellence. Uh, and you know what? The Israeli healthcare system has a lot to offer as well because they are used to a private healthcare system, to, to healthcare system that is being, you know, formed or, 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 or distributing the healthcare services in another way. And in Israel, the public healthcare system is more dominant. Right. And, and the way that we are doing that with the sick funds all around the country and the public hospitals that are really uh, in the center of the healthcare and the core of the healthcare system in Israel, you've seen that in the corona. We are a healthcare system that is very efficient, very smart, high in technology, high in innovation. So we have a lot to gain from the, the people that are coming from and the States. And a lot, States, I'm guessing, what you're saying, to give and, them and as well, to, a new yeah, challenge. And a lot to offer. And right. they see that. They right. see that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a new climate for them. And they uh, embrace that. They really see the benefit of creating such a, uh, such a system that, that provides services in the quality that they used to see in the States. This is what our healthcare system is achieving. You know, many of our physicians are doing the fellow in, in, in the States. Right. And they are do, doing their, you know, their higher education in the States. And this is and this combined with the uh, Olim Chadashim from, from Nefesh Shebet Nefesh, a, a, a great success here in our healthcare system. And the, on the other hand though, I would, I would wonder, you mentioned how doctors or medical professionals in America are, are especially are used to working in private you know, clinics, mm -hmm. right? Private insurance companies here. It's, it's more of a balagan, though, no? Does it not take a little uh, adjusting? There is a lot of order in the chaotic balagan uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. So uh, there are sick funds that distribute the, the medical services to anyone in Israel, to any citizen and any resident in Israel. Full distribution. Uh, we are looking in our healthcare system in uh, equality. Uh, and uh, you know... Uh, still uh, with a very high quality in the sick funds. And then you have the hospital. 95% of the beds, of the medical services in our system, in the inpatient system, are public. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a, an order because most of, uh, of the beds are either governmental or run by sick funds. Right. Only a minority are uh, what we are calling a public-owned hospital, uh, still the, almost all the services are public. Do we have, we have private services. Uh, you know, the after hours, our physician 
in some called uh, some sort of a two-tier system uh, working here in the morning there in the afternoon so we are achieving the order that we are looking at and uh, you know the regulatory body the ministry of health doing a great job in, in keeping and maintaining the system the way that is uh, acting and you saw so people the, shouldn't be afraid or deterred be afraid, by, the, you know, by, by the, the chaos. Many countries around the world in the corona uh, uh, epidemic were looking how Israel is doing. Right. How Israel is doing when we had, you know what, 80,000 active corona patients a day. 80,000. And comparing that to other countries, it was a lot. It was a huge task. Still, most of them got the treatment in the community in the sick funds. They were not flooding our emergency room. This is because our healthcare system is really focused in community care. We have the highest number of community clinics per population uh, all over the world. So I, I want to talk to you a bit about Corona because you yeah. were for a number of months <laughs> the coronavirus czar or commissioner of Israel. All around the year either right. running the hospital sure. or running the, 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 father, and mother, effort, the right. father and mother shield for, for the nursing homes all right. around Israel and then the corona time. So on the one hand, Israel, like you just mentioned, did a very good job in keeping <clears throat> the hospitals not getting flooded. Mm -hmm. and per capita, though, our infection rate was not, was, was a was, bit high. was one of the highest in the world. One of you the can highest, say that. Correct. It was one of the highest in the world. Uh, ma mismanagement throughout to some extent. You spoke yeah. openly about yeah. this and your frustration at the time mm -hmm. with the political echelon mm -hmm. and, and just the difficulty, and we're still in this difficulty with the elections that are still going yeah. on and we still don't have a government. On the other hand, an amazing vaccination effort, right? An amazing vaccination campaign. An amazing job in keeping good uh, treatment and good health care services for corona in the hospital and in the sick farm. So how do you how so, do you explain so, this? It's like a dichotomy. It's on the one hand, we're good at something. The things. dissonance. The yeah, dissonance. the dissonance. How, how does it make sense? First, the healthcare system got ten, got a, a, a grade of excellence in running the epidemic, in running the challenge, sick funds, hospitals, and vaccination. But then again, the combination of running Corona is not only a healthcare challenge. It's the challenge of a country. It's the challenge of a government. It's the challenge of the trust, building the trust. Because when you want to control corona, this is not the healthcare system. Controlling corona is aligning with the public, giving them, you know, the, the, the restriction or giving them the regulation in order to reduce the infection rate. And there, Israel did not succeed well. And there... Because that was more of a society issue? That was a cultural problem? I, I believe that it took us in a point where there was some kind of disbelief to the government because we went through four elections campaigns cycles in a country that took the fourth one in the beginning of 2020. March 2020 was the fourth election campaign uh, uh, after a few years of mistrust. So you know what? This is making uh, uh, the public uh, disbelief. Right. And then when you are asking them to sacrifice, you they know, don't have the trust foundation to make those sacrifices. And, and sacrifice is not just sacrificing, you know, the way that you live. It's sacrificing your wages, your freedom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and after the first wave, the Israeli citizens behave, you know, perfect on the first wave. They really put and uh, put their trust in the regulation, in the restriction, in, in, in the lockdowns. But once we experience a second wave, as early as June, first country in the world that experienced a second wave because we reopened after the first wave. Too fast. Too fast. Then... And you were warning that that was going to yeah, happen. And, and, right. and, and, then, and then it 
all went crazy. Mm -hmm. People were not believing, were not doing what they should have done. And the second wave was very, very intense. We have kept that in June, July, and August, during the summer. We kept that, you know, under balance. But then again, in September, it, you know, flamed up. Mm -hmm. And then we had to do the second, first lockdown in the world. Uh, first time in the world, the second lockdown during the Tishrei holidays. Right. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. Sukkot, then yeah. you are asking the religious communities, all Israelis, for them, it is, you know, holidays as, as, as in for all Israelis. Ask them to sacrifice again their freedom, to go under lockdown again. And they have done that. They did a great job from the 18th in September until the 18th in October for all 30 days. They've reduced the number of people infected per day from 9,000 to 900. You know, this is unprecedented. The second most successful lockdown all around the world. Mm -hmm. And it took us a, a lot of energy to come to the public, to come to the people, to say, we were wrong. And now we have to go to another lockdown. And this is not a good timing because it's holiday time, but this is in your hands. We need your full cooperation, full understanding. We will win that. And I was talking about a new contract I because remember. we were asking our citizens, our people to do and to sacrifice more and more and more. People were not earning their living, were not seeing their grandpa and grandma, were not uh, sending their children to, the, to schools, and all around the world, Europe and the States as well, people were not under lockdown. Right. So it was tough. Do you, do you think that now, now we're vaccinated, thank God, right? We're, we're pretty much back to normal in yeah. the country. Are we done with this? Is it behind us? I'm saying it's the, the disease, Corona as a disease will still remain. But our challenge was to change the dynamic of an epidemic to, to a dynamic of a sporadic disease mm -hmm. that we can handle. Still, there will be people with severe Corona infection hospitalized here in Ichilov but there will not be hundreds, or there will not be even, you know, 50 people. Now we have only up to 10 people with severe corona. Hospitalized so, right now? Yeah, yeah, so it's another disease. We are treating that. Right. The problem with the epidemic of corona, that it overwhelmed hospitals, that government had to do lockdowns. So we will deal with corona. Don't be aware of mutation. Don't be afraid of mutation. Don't do lockdowns in order to be, you know, protected of mutation. Mutation of the virus will still happen. This is normative for, for, for viruses. It will happen. An escape mutation that will be, that the, uh, that the vaccine will, will not be, be effective against, I'm not sure that it's going to happen in the, in the near future. But I, I, I take that as a far, uh, uh, as a far incidence, and, and I'm not really want the government to, 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 to plan ahead so we'll because of mutations. So I was saying to them, open Ben-Gurion. Right. So this I want to ask you about this. That's yeah. great optimism. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. But do you think, you know, just the other day, the government announced a relaxing of restrictions to yeah. start to allow, especially Olim's families to come in, people yeah. who have a member of their family who live here, they weren't allowed to visit for yeah. about a year now. Do you expect that to even expand more? Of course. Tourists will be able to come? Israel should seek getting to normal tourism. And you know what? Gaining the opportunity now to have more tourism because we are the most green country in the world. Right. So yes, a tourism, you uh, uh, of course, families should visit. We can green, uh, give green passport for people vaccinated all around the world or recovered from corona all around the world. Come here to, to Israel and you know what? Uh, uh, you can have a mass gathering and even shows, cultural events, international cultural events. 
any kind of, of, of conferences, international conferences, Israel should lead the way to the world. This is what we have guaranteed because we are the first country to have 90% people in the high-risk groups above 40 years of age vaccinated. We have to show the world that it's working and to give and build the trust not only for the people of Israel, but for all European Union, for the states, build the trust. Once you will be vaccinated, no more corona as an epidemic. You will have a victory. So this is why I was saying giving the numbers or giving the data to Pfizer is giving the data for the world. Mm -hmm. Because here we show that it's working, that the vaccine is very effective with very minor side effects. And it's working not only by protecting you from, trans uh, from, from infection, but also reducing transmission rate. Right. One of the one of the things that we saw throughout the pandemic also is, uh, while high infection rate, our mortality rate or fatality rate was was not as bad, right? Yeah. Per capita, um, only sadly, a zero point seven seven five. Right. So sadly, there are lots of people who have died. But here, Israel did well, and that, that, to a large credit, goes to the health system and to the hospitals and the intensive care units, similar to the ones that mm -hmm. are here at Ichilov. What, what do you think that is that part of that medical innovation ecosystem that we have here in Israel? Because there's all these studies that are always coming out of, you know, testing this and testing this new technique, this medication, uh, cannabis, whatever it might be, to try to help with COVID patients. Is that something special <clears throat> here? Yes, uh, but I'm not really uh, connecting that to, 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 to the case fatality, to the low case fatality. Israel is very innovative. We have a DNA of a startup nation. We are taking the DNA of a startup na nation that you can talk a lot why it was created, especially here in Israel. And we see that also in the healthcare arena. Uh, medical innovation, uh, medical biotech, biomed, uh, digital health, artificial intelligence, we embrace and we are pushing ahead for our physician to be in, a, in the ideation spirit. I do not want my physicians, my nurses, to do the same that is written in the textbook. You have some artificial intelligence autonomous system here. In yeah, the we, we, have, we have really a, a full department, a, a staff, crew that are putting a lot of effort into artificial intelligence. We have huge data. We want to use the data to do better medicine because we usually uh, experience what uh, the physician can, can remember. I want to hand him all the experiences of all the physician, of all the patient, all around the years that have been here in, in Ichilov. And you know what? In many other hospitals. And it, it will make him a better Physician, I want to do decision support once he is, you know, confronting a very sophisticated case, a very complex case. And we are doing that. We are doing that, you know, in automatic, in, uh, in autonomic cars. We can do that in any kind of medical services. But you know what? It's not only AI, in, uh, artificial intelligence. It's getting the medical devices, getting the molecules, doing advanced therapies, Doing, uh, 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 taking the physics into healthcare and pushing ahead corona allow us to understand humbly that we are a little bit primitive in healthcare as opposed to other industries that went far ahead. A little bit primitive meaning that in order to diagnose corona it takes few hours. In order to, do, uh, to diagnose it with, with uh, you know, with a high, very high, 100% sensitivity. We can do better in healthcare. We have to take the technologies ahead and to use that for better medicine. And this is the place. Israel is a huge, you know, ecosystem of startup, of innovation. Use that also for healthcare. Like and this is what we are doing here. We have our, uh, uh, our system, uh, the IMED, the Digital of Medical Innovation. And many other hospitals are doing that. We are trying to make our hospital startup companies. And this is what we should do. And this is my, you know, my uh, desire, my ambition, and many other hospitals and sick funds as well. So an injection of new talent coming as an aliyah, 
medical professionals, med tech, incub tech people. This would only... Tech acceleration. Uh -huh. They are doing the, 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 the tech acceleration that we are all looking ahead for. And this is uh, really fuel our, our uh, uh, strategy in pushing ahead for innovation. There's a lot to do. And you know what? We are creating now advanced therapies, not using drugs, chemical drugs, biological drugs, but, but engineering the cells, re-engineering the cells. The cells that carry a disease, I want to re-engineer them from the gen genomic level. We can do that. We are doing that now in CAR-T therapy. CAR-T therapy is a cell engineering for hemato-oncology diseases. We can do that for any disease. Do not use chemical. Do not use biological compound. Go to the cell. Re-engineer its, its, its uh, physiology in order to treat the, the disease. Neurodegenerative diseases as well. There is a lot to do in healthcare. We are only at the tip of the iceberg. We have to, uh, to, to dig down and, and reinvent medicine. And this is what we are setting an example here in Ichilov. And you know what? These people, uh, the, the most excellent people, are coming from the States, making the Aliyah, really are, uh, are people that we uh, need for pushing this excellence. Okay. Professor Roni Gamzu, thank you very much. Thank you so much.